This is a quick video for parallel reactions. And what we want to do here is see how temperature affects parallel reactions. So temperature. So let's say we have A and it can go to B or it can go to C. So A going to B is governed by K1 and A going to C is governed by K2. So therefore the reaction rate of B is equal to K1 times the concentration of A to some power alpha 1. And the reaction rate of C is equal to K2 times the concentration of A to the power of alpha 2. Now if we remember that the kinetic constant is equal to A times E to the power of a negative activation energy all divided by RT. That's the Arrhenius equation and we use it to find out how temperature affects K. So if we instead plug this into K1 and K2, what we get is we get RB is now equal to A1 times E to the power of a negative, so E to the power of a negative E1 over RT, where again E is just the activation energy, times the concentration of A to the power of alpha 1. And the same is true for C, where we now have A1, or A2, sorry, A2, times E to the power of a negative E1 divided by RT times the concentration of A to the power of alpha 1. So this part is all by itself. And that's all times the concentration of A times alpha 2, not 1. Alpha 2. So if we remember the selectivity, the definition of selectivity is B over C, and what we want, we want B. So we want selectivity to be very high. We want B to be selected, to be produced more than C. So now if we remember that selectivity is equal to RB over RC, well that's equal to A1 times E to the power of a negative E1 divided by RT, all times the concentration of A to the power of alpha 1, this all divided by A2, E to the power of, so that's actually to the power of a negative E2 divided by RT, and R is the ideal gas constant, times the concentration of A to the power of alpha 2. Now just to make this a little bit simple, just to simplify it just a little, let's say alpha 1 is equal to alpha 2. If that is true, then this simplifies down to just K1 over K2, or simply A1 divided by A2 times E to the power of. So all we're doing is, the only thing difference between this and this is it'll be E1 minus E2. So simply it'll be a negative E1 minus E2 all divided by RT. So now let's look at this. Let's look at a case where E1 is greater than E2. What happens if that occurs? Well, if E1 is greater than E2, this is a positive number. So this part right here, this part right here becomes positive. So that's a positive number. So what we get is, instead, what we get is selectivity is equal to, and that's B, C, is equal to A1 all divided by A2 times E to the power of E1 minus E2. E2, and again, that's all divided by RT. So a little bit bigger brackets, RT. So now let's look at, let's really look at this now. And all we did is E to the power of a negative one, E to the power of a negative one is equal to one over E to the power of one. So all we did was just move this down and take away that negative. So let's look at this case. So if we increase the temperature, if we increase the temperature, this number becomes smaller. So that becomes smaller. So as this becomes a smaller number, the whole bottom becomes a smaller number. And as the entire bottom of this fraction becomes smaller, the selectivity goes up. So if we were to graph that selectivity versus temp, what we see is we would see that as the temperature increases, the selectivity increases. And again, that's because as you increase the temperature, this part becomes bigger. As this becomes bigger, 
this whole part becomes smaller, as this part becomes smaller, as this whole part becomes smaller, and as the bottom of a fraction becomes smaller, the number that that fraction represents increases, so the selectivity increases as well. And that's only for when E1 is greater than E2. So that's only when, when the activation energy of A going to B is greater than the activation energy of A going to C. Now let's look at a case where the opposite is true. Case where E1 is now less than E2. E2. So in this case, this now becomes a negative number. So if E1 is less than E2, that becomes a negative number, and if that's a negative number, that will cancel out with this other negative. So what we get is we get the selectivity of BC is equal to A1 divided by A2 times E to the power of E1 minus E2 all divided by RT. RT. Now, as we increase the temperature here, we make this a smaller number, and as that becomes a smaller number, the whole top of this fraction becomes a smaller number, so therefore the selectivity decreases. So what we instead see if when we graph this, we see the selectivity versus temperature, we see it plunge downwards as the temperature increases. And again, that's only the case when the activation energy of A going to B is less than A going to C. That's only in this case. So here, when you increase the temperature, when you have a, when E1 is greater than E2, an increase in temperature increases selectivity. When you have another case where E1 is less than E2, an increase in temperature decreases selectivity. Now the one thing that needs to be noted, noted is when you decrease the temperature, so if we wanted to, if we had this case, we had this case, and we decrease the temperature to increase the selectivity, so if you de decrease the temperature, you increase selectivity. If we did that, we're also slowing down the rate of production. So there will come a point where you won't get anything produced because you won't have enough energy, enough kinetic energy in the molecules to actually have a reaction occur. So as you decrease the temperature, you're also decreasing the rate of production of your molecule, of your product. So you've got to have a counterbalance. Do you want high selectivity and low product count? Or do you want high product and poor selectivity? Or just somewhere in between like right here. So...